Hello, uh, welcome to Isolate Talks. My name is Mickey Jones. Um, I am a junior creative slash copywriter slash accidental writer. Um, and I graduated from the University of Lincoln in September 2019 in creative advertising. Um, and today I am here to talk to you about a topic that I really struggle to to figure out what I wanted to talk about specifically um, because there's been so many great speakers on this uh, program already and some of the names I have on my shelves so it's very intimidating uh, to figure out what I could what I could, what I could give to you um, but I think this one might hit home for a lot of you and it might be something you're thinking about now and I hope that it inspires you to act after this um, but this uh, is going to be about how we should be an agent of change um, as creatives um, so I'll start off with the fact that you are human and I'm human. Um, we have both been given a consciousness to think, to act and to feel. Um, I believe that we were not born to hate, we're, we're born with love, we're born from love and hate um, can manifest in forms such as racism or sexism or classism um, and that is something that is learnt um, depending on, you know, our cultures, um, societal structures, the people we're surrounded by, what we read, what we consume. Um, and unfortunately, it does result in a lot of social issues uh, that are currently happening in the world. Um, <laughs> and you might say that I'm a do-gooder or I want to go out there solving world issues. But I think to that, I want to say, who wouldn't? Um, why wouldn't you? Um, surely you want to kind of live in a better world where everybody gets on with everyone um, it's a nice you know peaceful world a liberal world um, I guess I'm describing utopia but you can't you can't not want to make the world a better place surely you know whether it's big actions or small actions um, and I think that's why I realised I wanted to go into advertising um, specifically because I realised that advertising gives creatives a platform where we can truly make a difference to society. Uh, we're not just causing mayhem. We're not just, you know, hacking our way into people's minds. Um, we have the ability to impact on their consciousness and how they act and how they think and they f like how they feel. Um, and I think that is so scary. Like, that scares me. Um yeah it's very very scary kind of power to have um and with great power comes great responsibility and as oscar wilde said art like morality um consists of drawing a line somewhere so at some point our moral compass is going to be in a twist um especially you know aligning with the work that we're producing or the companies that we work for the brands that we work for and we need to address that kind of head on and kind of question why we're feeling uncomfortable and what we can do about it um you know when when should we draw the line and when should we speak up um and not just kind of be creative powerhouses but but really use it to do some good and to raise awareness for you know issues and and our values that we really care about um so in doing so i should probably demonstrate a topic that i think would be a first a first one to kind of tackle or address um it's been a big topic for a very long time but currently it's at boiling point um if you can see on your news feed and you've been keeping up with the news and this is about racism specifically at the moment it is anti-black racism um which has ar arose from the unfortunate death of george floyd uh which has been filmed and then we have the death of belly manjinga in, in this country in the uk um, amongst many others and they are not the first and they will not be the last uh, racism isn't happening more and more uh, racism is just getting filmed um, it's just getting reported um, because of social media because of the digital portable devices that we have it's now becoming documented um, and I think the time to speak up and the time to stand up about it is now uh, when we're all kind of sat at our homes in lockdown thinking you know the world that we left behind when we went into lockdown what type of world we want to come out into um, and on this particular topic, um, well, I'm a very emotional person anyway, and I would say I'm very outspoken. 
um, and it comes from a good place sometimes I might be ignorant and I'm, I'm still trying to learn about uh, racism at the moment um, and prejudice against the black community it's still something that I I have a lot to learn um, I'm in the process of doing that but someone um someone said to me that I should make the most of my kind of creative freedom now my my freedom to use my voice whilst I'm not tied down to an agency um, a brand a corporate company and I think something about that made me feel very uncomfortable it didn't settle very well with me um it was more from the fact that I want to I want to leave a good mark on the world and I want to do you know do work that I truly believe in um creatively and also socially um and if I were to work for a company or a place I, I asked my partner this like what would you do if we were confronted with the fact that we, maybe we can't use our voice openly on a topic that we really ticks off our bones um for fear of being fired or for fear of you know being dropped um and not being hired and I think I'm so glad that I chose the right person to go into this industry with but we both said that you know what like we will always stand by what we believe in um you know a job is it like we all work we all work to have to pay our bills we all work to have money um and if we can make an advertising amazing great um but at the end of the day a job is a job and it should not affect it should not define your morals and it should not define your values um it should definitely not oppress them either um and if you are a brand or an agency listening to this now and you're feeling uncomfortable with what i'm being said um i would like to ask you what do you believe in and aside from commercial success because consumers now more than ever are becoming smarter with where they spend their money um the social responsibility and the ethicalness of how a company operates how a brand operates um cancel culture is very big as well uh, you need to see you need to realize that there is so much more than commercial success um the business will always go on as usual there will always be business and always money to be made but social issues um and problems and especially when movements like black lives matter happen they come around once in a lifetime um and i guess you should ask yourself when your consumers come to you and you know when all this kind of mellows out um and hopefully hopefully solved but i have a feeling it's going to be a very long journey um they're going to be questioning what side of history you stood on um and seeing sometimes your silence your silence uh, speaks more than your words um with this particular topic at the moment we're still on racism here um it's been circling circulating around a lot especially on my instagram news feed that <sighs> silence is also violence um and not speaking up and not standing out is is also you kind of choosing the side of the oppressor and you know as unsettling that fact is it's also very true um and right now if you're an agency if you're a brand if you know if, if you're an agency owner or, or like a company owner um i want to tell you the story of two two case studies that a, where a brand and an agency had stood up for something um and in doing so they not only kind of ensure their commercial success but um coming from an authentic place and to really tackle it head on um they were able to be remembered in a lot of people's minds um certainly in my minds anyway um and the first is one that everybody knows of um and it's nike when colin kaepernick knelt to the american anthem um that circulated around a lot uh, and Nike was the, the first brand to actively tackle the, tackle the issue of race head on by featuring him as part of their campaign um, in the epicenter of it um, and Kaplik said that believe in something even if it means sacrificing everything um, and I, I truly believe in that um, if we don't have our beliefs and if we don't have our values and our morals and what are we as people never mind what are we when we we kind of put those type of uh, constructions of ourselves into our work uh, if you if you don't stand for something if you don't believe for something then the work you make is meaningless almost um 
and no no one wants that um uh and when they did this um they kind of caused a chain reaction uh firstly people either loved them or secondly people burnt their shoes and filmed it online and it was trending um you could say that they could have pulled that campaign and they could have apologized or you know they could have redone it or they, they could have not tackled it at all and not featured colin um but they stood by it and they produced more and more campaigns after that um and did it start a conversation yes um did they lose out on millions no um have they strengthened their brand values and kind of their brand image absolutely fucking lootly um people will never stop buying from nike uh, as phil collins said you know as long as you have enough people loving your brand then more people loving your brand then it doesn't matter about the ones that hate it so i guess the question for you guys who are working in an agency or a brand or a company um organization i want to ask you what do you want your consumers and what do you want the people who work there to love about you um is that love going to be strong enough like have you is there any way that you could reiterate that or in, in what you do and in what you say um yeah question that um and be brave be brave like nike um take a stand on something um and the second one i want to talk to you about is wyden and kennedy um wyden and kennedy have started affinity groups um such as agency we black um latinx 51 percent um to kind of diversify their understanding of different communities and groups um minority groups um in portland and um whew, racism is definitely something that i've experienced in my life um and during covid19 there's been a lot of hatred and, and a rise in hate crimes towards um those from asian backgrounds um and when agency the affinity group from wide and kennedy released their film called call it covid19 um i watched that with tears streaming down my face um because i, I haven't seen i haven't I, I mean i haven't seen a brand kind of tackle it in this type of way never mind an agency that i would hope to work there one day for to to you know look into the struggles that the asian community have gone through and the backlash that they're receiving at the moment the hate crimes and using their resources dedicating their time um to tackle it head on and then in, in doing that like it, oh i'm just like wow like that's so brave and it's so empowering um and thank you for doing that because you have no idea like some sometimes <laughs> the world can be a shitty place but when brands like nike and when agencies like Wyden kennedy put work out like that it gives it gives out a lot of hope um and this hope can turn into new actions um and can start conversations um it can challenge people's perceptions and prejudices um and in doing so we are actively impacting on people's consciousness for the better good um for the greater good um if these you know if these big names and big brands and agencies can can stand up for something um and do the unthinkable so can we as creatives um i think now um uh, it is important to use the platforms that we have been given it's important to use our skills to channel it into um causes that we care about so it doesn't have to be do you know it doesn't have to uh, concern race it could be whether it's about the environment it could be challenging the gender pay gap um just social problems that hit that hit home with you but you need to start with if you don't know if you're not aware of you know all the problems that are out there go out and find out talk to people going through these things educate yourself um and find something that really makes you angry anger anger works really well um anger doesn't have to come from sometimes you don't have to shout sometimes you don't have to use violence um and actions for your anger sometimes it's good to get a fire burning and then kind of utilize that emotion um and utilize you know all this like the pain that you feel and the empathy that you have towards that cause or that group um and use it to, to create the best work that you've ever created effectively you know people buy into emotions 
uh, people don't buy into the benefits, they don't buy into the fact that it's 15% off Gymshark, anything like that. They, they buy into the, the ideas that you're selling, they buy into the emotions that you're giving them and what they're going to be leaving with. Um, so use your emotion and use, use your anger and sadness or yeah, use everything that is affecting you as a human um, and channel it into your approach. Um, when it comes to racism, um, it is something that I definitely want to tackle moving forward in this industry um, because I personally experienced it and I would never want any anyone to feel prejudiced in that way. Um, but I want to talk to you about sometimes it can't just be the oppressed groups, um, the minority groups that are speaking up for themselves and fighting for these causes. Sometimes we need our white allies and we need people who, you know, benefit from other privileges that they might be unaware of um, to speak up for us and to, to help with those and connect with us and fight with us. Um, and I'll give you a really good example of when, when this has really helped me. Um, when I was in, when I was in secondary school, um, people used to call me names. Um, I remember, um, oh, this is emotional, um, I remember one boy, um, and he, he used to chase me around the school and call me all sort of names related to, like, you're a chink, or like, go back to your own country, and I was so shocked, um, because, you know, I expected that when I was in primary school, but in secondary school, really. Um, and when you're kind of confronted with these like type of racial remarks, sometimes you want to act. You, like when you, when I look back at, it, I'm so angry for not reacting and doing anything. But when people address you like that, it it kind of paralyzes you. Um, it just because like I just couldn't believe it was coming out of his mouth and people can have so much hate in themselves that they could actively you know kind of pin it onto an individual just because of the way they looked um and the only way that he stopped doing that was because my best friend at the time um who was white she chased him around the school and like <laughs> i remember this one time that he did it she fully dragged him by the neck um and she was so much shorter than him as well like you know just, just my best mate and like we're just two two young girls like enjoying our lunchtime breaks and she dragged him by the neck and took him to the head teacher's office and like fully knocked on the door and said like he is being racist and you need to do something about it because the school knew i told them many a times and sometimes they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't actually do anything that i kind of gave up um and i just withdrew into myself in that way and by her doing that um and he was embarrassed as well because this wasn't you know an asian friend of mine calling him out this was someone who looked like him um calling him out on his bullshit basically and the school finally addressed it uh, and he never did it again to me ever ever since that day that she stood up for me and dragged him by the note to the head teacher's office um and that's what I want to tell you. Sometimes it's not about, you know, if you, great if you want to challenge your creative work, but sometimes it is just about speaking up and challenging perceptions, um, whether it's through jokes, which are harmless, um, but actually it's racial profiling, uh, to the conversations that you're having on your dining room table. Um, it is going to be uncomfortable. Um, change is never going to be easy. Otherwise, the world would be a better place right now, and I wouldn't be talking about this issue right now. Um, solutions, I can't give you solutions, you know. This is what you need to do, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do. Like, I don't know all of them, I'm still trying to learn about them. But that's the point, is to... You're never going to have a guide to how to solve world issues or social issues. Um, it comes from you feeling enough and you educating yourself enough on you know inequality inequality that's happening around you to to act on it on on your own behalf um and to do that i guess that has to come from firstly 
trying not to stay silent silent on topics like this um speak out if you can challenge perceptions if you can um i and if you know maybe you're an introvert um maybe you're not as outspoken as i am um but i'll, I'll raise a really good linkedin article that i read this morning by hassan kaya um, and he talks about the deafening of silence um he realized it wasn't about what you could add to the conversation um in fact it's just about joining it you know be outraged together but be committed together is what he said um and i think that is something that we could we could learn from and take on and moving forward um and just realizing that social problems show, social problems um they're not a trend uh racism shouldn't be captured in a hashtag you know this if you're going to be addressing this now as a brand or as an influencer please do not use it just to further your own gains like people will see through that you know they're not stupid people are very smart um like you need to and that's why i'm urging you to find something that you truly care about um that you can fully put your energy into because that's that's how we're only going to be making groundbreaking work and how we're only going to be exploring uncomfortable areas um and challenging you know perceptions um and so from that maybe not staying silent um also kind of educating yourself on these topics follow people who don't look like you talk to people who don't look like you um really like talk to them and as advertisers especially when uh, you know we first started my lessons in lincoln we've always been told to find out what is the human truth um what is a human truth that we can all connect with and we can all find out you know look at this as if it's a brief um what is the problem really find out what is the problem asking why 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 all the time until you get to the root of the problem um and then and then start using your wonderful brains to find out ideas and solutions and how you can tackle this you know strategies moving forward using how your strategic brain to figure out okay who should we be targeting uh, where should we be targeting um yeah um and using the human first approach like everything starts from having a conversation and it all starts from us learning from each other now and talking from each other um and acting on what we have learned not just kind of letting it slide um actively you know incorporate it into our lives um and like Edmund Burke said the only ne- the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing um I hope that when lockdown is over we we are now you know more aware and more read up on the injustices that are happening all around us um as the poet Kai Asaya Jamal said, he was a model and an activist and he's using his platform to speak up on topics like gender and trans identity. Um, he questioned in his poem, after this, what next? Um, this very idea of what what is going to happen next after, after lockdown. Um, and the lines that really, really stuck with me from this poem is, I have awoken to enough mornings of the same, to enough passing days to have go to have gathered hunger for change and i'm sure that now if you're sick of seeing your four walls um find find the hunger and find find the need um to propel change to create changes um with your creative good to be an agent of change um I might start with if you're a junior or you know if you if you have spare time and resources um to helping out charities organizations um there's a really good project that was started by Rory Stiff, Nikki Huron and Casey Highfield called the Good Book um you can check out www.good-book.co.uk um and on there there's a list of hundreds of charities that are currently in need of donations you know they're in need of help um and what what do creatives do best we we solve problems creatively um and we communicate it on a mass scale um we're able to appeal to a wider audience um so if you can please check that out um but in the meantime read 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 then 
at learn talk share donate help sign protest petition teach um social problems social problems aren't going to go away overnight um there is a systemic problem um and we all actively need to kind of take take some form of moral responsibility to tackle them with our creative skill set um and I, i'm guessing that's why you're here you know isolated talks is to tackle the issue of loneliness um and by doing so by you listening to other people who are sharing their insights um and their world views um you can also donate to the charity Samaritans. Uh, this is a really good example of creativity for good. So please donate to Samaritans. Um, if I haven't rambled on enough already, um, if you want to know about the struggles that I personally experience uh, amongst many others who are coming from geographical isolation or lower income families, please check out my article, uh, Young, Broken and Hungry. Um, but I hope that I have inspired you enough to get angry um, to cry, to feel sad, uh, it's all good to feel these emotions and sometimes you can't help but feel helpless, I, I definitely felt helpless at points, um, but embrace this first, uh, embrace this uncomfortableness um, and then go out there and just educate yourself, you know, talk to, talk to people, talk to your neighbours, talk to your families um, and then tackle it as if you would a brief, you know, find out what the problem is, um, what the human truth is, what are the insights, and then form solutions on how you can tackle it on maybe a micro basis. Um, it could, you know, whether you're going to be designing kind of posters raising awareness or you're going to be channeling it into um, a specific charity at the time that needs funding. Um, whatever you do, try not to do nothing and try not to stay silent. Um, the world needs your voice right now. And um, whichever stage you might be in your life, whether you feel like you're a junior or um, and you have kind of no no standing to talk up on um i urge you to challenge that perception and we should be more open about talking about difficult topics um because because from then on uh, we're able to move forward into hopefully a better society and a better place for us to be truly creative um thank you for listening please donate to samaritans and have a good day